What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. So it's been a Merry Christmas indeed for the PS4 scene as there's been quite a few things that have dropped over Christmas, starting of course with Gold Hen version 2.3 by Sistro. And this was a collaboration between Sistro and a bunch of other developers, Joe Cover, OSM and Illusion of course, and various others. So yeah, one of the things I wanted to mention about this, because obviously I did a full tutorial covering the setup of the Gold Hen 2.3 plugins and showing you the new features that were built into Gold Hen version 2.3. However, one of the things I didn't mention in that video, and I feel like it's definitely worth discussing here, is the fact that these plugins work with retail games as well. So things like the Game Patch plugin and the AFR plugin will work on your retail games if, you, if you're loading a game from the actual PS4 disc. Because before that, to do something like modify the game files of a game or patch the executable, you would have to, if you had a retail copy, you would have to turn it into a fake package copy or download a separate fake package copy of that game in order to be able to modify the game files with a modded update. Whereas now you can just put your retail game disc in and the plugin will swap out the modded files at runtime so that you can patch the executable with your 60 FPS patches or your frame pacing fixes, uh, developer menus, debug menus, and you know texture replacements and everything that you want to do using those plugins on your retail copies instead of having to you know have a fake package version in order to do that. So that's a pretty big deal. It's something I didn't I regret not mentioning in the video itself and I'm not, I haven't seen many other people really talk much about that, but that's a pretty big deal. If you still have a few retail games that you're using, then you know you don't have to worry about turning that into a fake package file. The plugins will swap the files out anyway, even though you're running a retail version of the game. Obviously, Gold Hen version 2.3 is great. Uh, it's you know it's added a ton of extra features, and we can hopefully expect more plugins to come out from other developers now that this has released. So more functionality will come to Gold Hen probably a lot more and a lot quicker than typically having to wait for new Gold Hen releases. Now the Gold Hen Sheets Manager was also updated around the same time, just a small update that adds a couple of features, like the ability to sort the game settings by name and by title ID. We also have an offline method of installing the cheats as well. You can download the patches from the repo and put them on the root of a USB drive that's formatted in presumably XFAT or FAT32 format, and then plug that USB into the PS4. Then when you run the Gold Hen Sheets Manager and you select the update option, it should check the USB drive for the zip file. And if it finds it, it will extract it and install the patches that way. Otherwise, you know, it normally reaches out to the server to download it. But if you're not connected to the internet on your PS4, then you can install them manually from a USB that way. So uh, yeah, pretty good stuff there. Now, the other thing that released on Christmas Day was Items Flow. Now, I already did a video covering the preview version of Items Flow. The full version has now released, so you'll find the download right here. I'll leave it in the description of this video. And again, I'll leave a link to my video covering this application. Uh, so that'll be in the description and in the cards. And I cover basically the whole application and all the features that are in there. And it's pretty much the same with the full release. Uh, there are a few differences. There has been a Christmas theme that's been added, so you can now apply the Christmas theme to uh, items flow. Plus, there's also been a companion app that has launched alongside this. This is an Android app for installing package files with items flow. All you have to do is run the Homebrew app on your PS4 and then load up the Android app, select a package file that you have on that Android device and click upload. Obviously, you have to enter the PS4's IP address in the IP box and the PS4 and the Android device need to be connected to the same network. And then when you click upload, it will upload the package file to the PS4. Items Flow will automatically detect that package file once it's uploaded and it will install it automatically, as you can see right here. So pretty handy feature that's been added there. So a companion app for Items Flow for installing package files from your Android device. So that's another thing that's been added right there. And uh, there's been a few fixes and stuff also implemented into Items Flow. A few of the kind of few issues that were found in the preview build have been fixed here in this latest version. So definitely check it out. Again, there'll be a download link down below and I've already done a video covering the whole process that you can check out as well. So next we have Al Azif around Christmas as well. I think this was Christmas Eve, uh, released this, a link to this GitHub page. And if we go to this GitHub page, we have a PS4 custom firmware toolkit. So obviously a lot of people get very excited when they, they see the those three letters CFW 
Um, unfortunately, this isn't actual custom firmware at this point. In the About section, it says it decrypts and encrypts various PlayStation 4 firmware files. So it's basically added, I think, a bunch of keys and a bunch of, um, you know, some code to be able to encrypt and decrypt various different firmware files. You can see here the proper keys, all of which can be obtained from the console. You can decrypt and properly encrypt the following binary images. You've got the kernel bootloader. You've got the initial program load, both patch and full for the syscon, the EAP kernel as well. I don't think the keys are included then. The keys are obtained from the console and then you can use this software to encrypt or decrypt using those keys. Um, it does say there are some things missing right now. So what's missing as far as custom code running everywhere? It's not currently supported with this repo. So SAMU, of course, encrypted with PCKs with SFlash and sign up with private keys, uh, various other things. So required for PS3 style custom firmware where you just install a pup. So we don't have that at the moment. Uh, private keys are not on the console, so that's why we were not able to do that. Also, self files encrypted and signed with private keys. It would not matter if SAMU IPL is broken slash custom. Private keys are not on the console, so we can't do that at this stage. And then there's Bluetooth, which isn't encrypted or signed anyway. And um, one of them's just packed, so it's just a zip file. There's the Blu-ray drive firmware, which hasn't been looked into. USB SATA. Only one revision hasn't been looked into either. Processor firmware haven't been looked at either. So the synopsis of this, as you can see, decrypts and encrypts EAP uh, kernel bootloader images located in dev S flash 0S0X33. So this could be the beginnings of at least a step towards a PS4 style custom firmware uh, eventually. So it's a custom firmware toolkit, but it's not custom firmware in and of itself just just basically methods of being able to encrypt and decrypt some of the various firmware files for the PlayStation 4. But one of the interesting things in here is it does say that this was stripped out of a larger project. So some things might not make sense or be optimal in this context. However, it should function as expected. I did my best minimizing it without rewriting any of it and any major changes in the functionality may not work within this context of a larger program or already be done. So send me some DMs before starting to work on any major changes. So it seems this has been pulled from a larger project. So what that leads the question to be, what is this larger project that this has been pulled out of? This is just one part of a larger whole. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we if that gets released at some point and what that turns out to be. So I want to see what that larger project is. But uh, yeah, anyway, so awesome stuff there from Al Azif. We'll have to wait and see what devs end up doing with this information. Uh, so it's a kind of a wait and see thing with this. So we're going to move on to some PS5 stuff now. So we've got this PS5 partition mount by IFAICOMPA. I'm not going to try and pronounce that. But yeah, we've got PS5 partition mount, the first PS5 custom theme. So this is a payload here that will allow you to mount these various folders as read write so you'll have full read write access to these directories which we haven't had up till now so previously if you just loaded the ftp payload on the ps5 and you tried to do anything in these directories it would not allow you to do anything you could extract files from these directories but you couldn't create new folders or delete files or replace files that were in these directories and a lot of these directories like the system ex directory as well and maybe system data i think it's mainly system ex uh, but one of these directories anyway contains a lot of stuff for basically making custom themes like stuff like your home menu background music things like you know various icons background images your your icons for your settings and your function icons and stuff like that so with read and write access to those directories that allows us to essentially create our own kind of permanent custom themes like we've seen on the ps4 so we can essentially do that now on the ps5 just by swapping out the files with ftp in order to actually load this, you have to use the John Tornblum exploit, which is the BDJ exploit, the exploit that uses the Blu-ray disc. So you need to take the ELF loader made by John Tornblum and burn that onto a Blu-ray disc, pop that in, run the disc, inject the ELF payload that mounts these directories with full read-write access, and then you have to switch over to Spectre's exploit and load up the WebKit version to then inject the FTP payload so that you can then swap out the files in those directories. So that's how it works at the moment. And as you can see, custom themes are already being created by various people. We've got this one right here um, by the person who released this. 
And uh, we also... Now, the source code, by the way, does come from John Tornblum. I think they just kind of uh, essentially compiled the payload. But uh, the source comes from John Tornblum. But there's a lot of people now who are creating their own custom themes and also experimenting because since we haven't had read and write access to those directories, now we can kind of start to poke around in those directories and see what other things can be changed. So that might open up a few new things that might be possible here with the PS5. Although one little word of warning here is that, of course, if you modify the wrong thing in the system directories, you could corrupt uh, the hard drive, which will essentially stop the PS5 from working. So you could end up kind of bricking your system if you accidentally delete the wrong thing in these directories. So do be wary if you are going to kind of mess around with this. Uh, obviously, it is fixable if you did accidentally, say, delete the system directory or something like that. Then you could recover in safe mode with a recovery firmware or something to reinstall the hard drive files. But that would kind of make you lose everything that was previously on uh, the PS5's hard drive. So it is recoverable if you do accidentally delete something. But, you know, you are going to lose all of your stuff. So just be careful if you are going to be messing around in these directories. I'll probably have a video on this at some point as well. I'm going to take a look into it, but uh, I haven't had time yet, but I'll definitely have a look at this and maybe do a video on maybe some custom theme stuff. So a couple of other things for the PS5 that have come out. This is very recent, so I don't have much context to this, but uh, Jose Gonzalez or T-Rex 777 uh, has come out and said that they've created a, a BDJ exploit in a permanent application that they can launch the exploit while watching a movie in the player which would seem to suggest he's somehow loading BDJ without the Blu-ray disc in some way, either through some kind of emulation or something else. Maybe it's got something to do with that USB method that we saw uh, recently where he was able to launch a PS4 game and with a USB drive plugged in, he could eject the disc and it would still be running. So it could be something, something to do with that potentially. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But uh, what I really wanted to cover from him here is again going into this whole read write access to these system directories he also posted here uh, yesterday on boxing day that if you increase the value when connecting the controller to the ps5 it tells you that there's an update for the controller if you want to update it you can potentially update your ps5 controller by changing this file here in the system ex directory etc bond this bond underscore firmware underscore info dot json and by increasing the controller version, it will give you an update prompt to update your PS4 or your PS5 controller. Um, again, not looked into this personally myself, so I wouldn't necessarily, you know, attempt anything yet. So that's all the jailbreaking news I have for you guys in this video. Hope you guys all had a good Christmas and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.